Hey guys, uh, this video is going to be about, um, let's see, um, what, how Christians are supposed to interact with uh, YouTube trolls and mockers and scoffers and atheists and Satanists and Luciferians. This is just going to be a video um, about that. Uh, let's see, and I, I will, I'm going to make a video soon showing you guys what I look like. I think there's some, someone messaged me like, why do you never show your face? Well, I just, I, I have, when I, ha I, I don't have a camera. I have an Android phone that I set up on this, um, that I just set up on this little, uh, I don't know what you would call it, a homemade tripod in a way. And I'm just trying to focus people on information because that's how I learn. I learn better just looking at information other than looking at someone's face talking. But yeah, I'll show, I'll, once I get a haircut, I'll try and make a video showing what I look like so you people will know that I'm not a reptile or a cyborg, okay? Um, yeah, so this video, like I said, it's going to be about how, how we're supposed to interact with people who leave troll comments and generally just hatred and what the Bible says. Now this is a, this is another paper I wrote. Um, um, when I'm conversing with an atheist, a worshiper of the world, a lover of hatred, a troll, people with a God complex, New Agers, closet Satan worshipers, I notice they all use the exact same tactics and they stoop to the same low when they eventually revert to behavior like mocking, cursing, insulting, denying, and even death threats. Um, I admit that I'm a very sarcastic person. When I had a comeback for mockers, it would always involve a heavy dose of sarcasm. And even recently, I would reply to YouTube trolls in a way that, in a way I have come to realize is not the way God wants us to react to them. Uh, when reading the book of Proverbs, I stumbled upon a few verses that really opened my eyes about what I was doing without even realizing it. Now, I never told any of them to go to hell or anything, like, you know, with a curse word, but looking back, it wasn't something that Jesus Christ would have said to them. And that's really what we all need to focus on. Like, would Jesus really have, is Jesus, are we acting like Jesus? I know we're not going to be perfect, but is, we need to, we need to start taming our tongues and our thoughts and really just wondering, is this really what, you know, would Jesus have done this? Because that's really what we're supposed to be going by. And when we all look at how we live and interact with mockers and scoffers, we should all continually keep that in mind. Jesus Christ's message to a scoffer and what I would end up saying were polar opposites, and I'm glad I've come to realize that. So let's go to Proverbs 9, verses 6 through 9. Forsake the foolish and live. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, something going off on my phone. I guess I got a text message. Okay. Forsake the foolish and live, and go in the way of understanding. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame, and he that rebuketh a, white, a wicked man getteth himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. So, Proverbs 9, 6 through 9 is really just telling, telling us we're really not supposed to converse with people who are like the amazing atheist and your average Obama cyber warrior and all these people that are leaving hateful comments, you're not really supposed to, um, how do I put this? You're really not, really not supposed to get into a discussion with them. If they are, Adam, if they are genuinely saying, I don't understand the Bible, I think it's stupid, then I think it's safe that you can enter into a conversation with them. But if someone's, if if the first thing that someone is opening up with saying on a YouTube comment or video or whatever is, you know, has to involve with Christians are dumb and y'all are all, you know, bleep and bleeps and stuff like that, 
just ignore them. Because they, they're going out of their way for a reason. They're not genuinely on there to learn. So let's look down here at the next paragraph. Uh, let's, see what I, let's see what I wrote. This is written by me, but I'm just trying to stay on topic because I often get off topic. So when we as Christians constantly try to make corrections to mockers or trolls, all we're doing is making them hate us even more. Think back to when you really understood that the Bible was the truth. Think back to when you really felt there wasn't any doubt that Jesus was the Son of God. Is it really likely that my reply to a YouTube troll is going to open their eyes and bring them to Jesus? No, it's not likely at all. And let me explain why. If somebody makes a comment on a Christian video and they say, you stupid Christians, I'm not scared of God and I can't believe how idi idiotic you people are. The Bible is the biggest fairy tale. That person had to have gotten on the internet, searched out a specific video with something to do with the Bible or Jesus, and then intentionally replied to the video because they wanted to. They do not want to have a change of heart. They want to spew hatred at people who follow Jesus because they themselves are full of unclean spirits and demons and thoughts. And it's those inward spirits that are drawn towards hating the truth. A comment from a believer isn't going to change their mind. That doesn't mean that God can't pull them out of the life they live, but we have to understand that the mocker doesn't realize his thoughts and his beliefs are blinded by the unclean spirits that abide in him. The unclean spirit is not going to come out of that person unless the host makes a choice to seek the truth. God can save them from those demons. A YouTube reply from a Christian is just likely to separate them farther from God. So we must refrain from interacting with them in that manner. So basically, the reason people, I don't think even atheists and all these people who hate Christians really, they don't see that they don't have Jesus in them. The reason we know we have unclean thoughts is because we know that they're the unclean spirits that are roaming the earth and that's We know where the unclean thoughts come from. These people don't. They just think that this is something that they believe. They don't really understand where it comes from. So you replying to them when they're spewing hatred isn't really going to change their mind 99% of the time because it's not them speaking. It's the unclean spirit that's changed their thoughts. Uh, let's see. However, a troll or scoffer is di different than somebody who is genuinely searching the truth and asking questions out of curiosity. For those individuals, we should focus and give them accurate and meaningful guidance, being as precise as a surgeon, making sure we re are revealing to them by our conduct the love of God. When they see our love for everybody, regardless of the wicked comments, then they will be drawn to the Holy Spirit because they see Jesus is truly in us by our attitude. Those curious individuals are far different than the average haters of, hater of Christians. Those people we are to preach to, preach the gospel, wait, I'm sorry. Those curious individuals are far different than the average hater of Christians. Those people we are to preach the gospel. But make sure if you're going to preach the gospel that you know what you're talking about. Having on the full armor of God, never go into battle without preparation. So, there is a situation on YouTube when we can get into conversation with somebody who doesn't believe in the Bible. But you have to understand the difference between somebody who's intentionally going after Christians to hate on them and someone who is just confused. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you be, may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand... Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all,
the word of God. Proverbs fourteen fifteen through 16. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. So, um, if you're going to go into discussion with somebody who is generous, is is uh, really confused about the Bible, and they're not necessarily just somebody out there who just hates Christians just for the fun of it, you need to be prepared for what you're going to say to him, and not just say say something that's uh, cliche. You need to have, you know, attack attack the situation with surgical precision. Know exactly what you're going to say and just kind of lure them in like you would a fish, like little by little, and then finally you bring them in with a net. You don't need, people need to be prepared with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the Scripture. You need to, and I, I'm not saying I'm holier than everybody. I, I have... I have that problem too. I, I don't know enough scripture by memory that I should really, but thank God that He's, you know, what I do have, um, I have retained in my memory, and I'm able to just pull it out of somewhere. Um, not not thinking I'm going to be able to do that, but I, that's something I need to improve on. Um, here's the amazing amazing atheist. I'm sure we all know who this is. He's really made stupidity uh an art form this is something i put out the amazing the amazing atheist it's impossible to have an open mind if you don't have one at all this guy this guy really is the definition and the model that all trolls go by he really relies on things like stephen hawking and i guess carl sagan and Really, anybody who hates the Bible, you can. That's the people that are his. See, he he worships man as God. Anything that an atheist or a Satanist has to say that makes any sense to him, he thinks it's just you know, hey, it's irrefutable. And um, I also want to say something else. Um, I wasn't going to say, but. I've uh I've had a lot of trouble talking to people like um the Groxt and um I I like a lot of his videos but lately I unsubscribed from him and I really think that if you understand what I'm about to say that you should probably do the same this really is what made me make this video, come to make the video. I had a discussion, I, had, I left a couple comments on his pages. And he said, uh, basically, if you don't believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, that you're a pawn of the devil. And uh, he basically told me, that, you know, in a, in a way, he told me that you're, you know, kind of stupid, and he was talking to this other person, too, that me and him were kind of telling him that you need to look up the pre-wrath rapture video, and because basically all, 90% of all biblical scholars believe in the pre-wrath rapture, and not pre-trib, but that the pre-tribulation rapture if you're going to be a preacher or a pastor, you have to preach it for the most part. 99% of the time you have to preach it because it's the popular doctrine. And, um, you know, you're going to be an outcast, basically. It's basically, the pre-tribulation rapture is basically what evolution is to the mainstream world, to Christianity. It's our version of evolution. There's no nothing in the Bible that proves the pre-trib rapture. They always use one verse of Scripture and another verse of Scripture, and they don't look at the whole Bible like we're supposed to. 
line upon line, precept upon precept. I'm so sick of people. I, I can't tell you how many people I've been blocked by who are Christians because I say, hey, you need to, you need to look into the pre-wrath rapture because it's, it's, it is backed by so much scripture. And it's really hard to say something in the Bible is a doctrine is 100% irrefutable. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry, I worded that wrong. It's hard to, a lot of the things that come about, um, these new doctrines, it's hard to say that it's irrefutable. The pre-wrath rapture is irrefutable. You will you would have to ignore the scriptures in order to disagree with it. Um, and if you haven't seen the video, it's on it's on my channel. It's on my it's my featured my featured video. I guarantee you, you will not be uh, disappointed. But I was blocked by people that I looked for. I looked up to. I I was blocked by them because I didn't have the same views. And like I showed you, what we're supposed to do with mockers and trolls is just ignore them. But it says we're supposed to reprove a wise man because he will be made wiser. So, you know, I was thinking, okay, well, I don't see any problem with 